you doing, everybody? Great to be back home in Indiana from the Civic Center in Hammond over the special Midwest Pioneer Road Literary Network. Chet Kapik along with Jerry Seltzer, the excitement, glamour, and color of Rotary. The Midwest Pioneers versus the Bay Bombers right there. Little number 51, Lana Kusanovich calls off the jam. We're in the first period. Just over six minutes to play. Score, Pioneers two, Bay Bombers nothing. You know, Jerry Seltzer, we should bring our fans up to date. Several new additions on this Pioneer Club. Well, of course, it's not by intention, Chet. Uh, unfortunately, Debbie Cho sir, uh, suffered an injury to her elbow while on the road down in uh, Fort Worth, Texas. But uh, Joan Weston uh, has picked up a skater who skated with her for many years on the bomber, number 57, Candy Jones. And although she's not as big as Debbie Cho, she adds something that's very badly needed. Right there she is, right there. Very badly needed on this team. She has a great as deal of experience. You watch her skate, she knows exactly where to be at what time, and here we go. Great series, the bomber. Number 37 out on the jam, Carol Peanuts Meyer for the Bay Bombers. Back from the back, Dolores Tucker, number 34. Down goes the Golden Girl. Joan Weston on the circle here in Hammond. Bay Bombers got a quick going, but good. 5.09 to play in the first period. Hope you're having fun all along the network. Pioneer Girls, Weston 59, Kasanovich 51, Forbes 58, Nybauer 56, number 57 is Candy Jones, and I like this kid already. Laszlo and Weston continuing their vendetta there. You see it, Peanuts Meyer trying to pick up some points for her Bay Bomber teammates, and she calls off the jam. And referee Bobby Sieber, the man in the stripes, one half of our officiating combo, outstretches with one finger, signifying one point for the Bay Bombers. Chet, uh, this game is being seen on both the Pioneer and Bomber Network, and uh, we want to mention, uh, of course, the Bombers looking forward to their big home opening in San Francisco on April 22nd. Big, big goings on here. Poster night in Hammond, and the biggest crowd of the season by far. We must have almost 4,000 people here, Chet. Fantastic turnout. And they're making plenty of noise, to be sure. Don't forget you fans in the Midwest, especially in Chicago. Tomorrow, Sunday, in the amphitheater, 3 o'clock, final afternoon game of the season. These same two clubs on your screen right now. Number 58 is the Barney Stone, of course, Darlene Forbes for these Midwest Pioneers. Off the whip, there goes Margie Laszlo. Pioneer uniforms, of course, red, white, and blue. American colors, slightly. Back in the back, little Sherry Earth with the blonde hair, number 53. She has it, trying to pull it also. Here comes Laszlo. Four. They are the jamming threads at this moment. Two champions, a pivot skater, two blockers on each side. We are in full and equal strength, five on five. Now, Jody Weston, R.J. Lesnar. Oh, I tell you, eight Chicago, St. Louis, and Southwest Texas. Everywhere you go, they've been having themselves a event. Look at that punishment. If you don't think those things sting, forget about it. And R.J. Lesnar puts it together, but good. Lesnar wins round one, but we're early. And with just over three minutes to play, the Bay Bombers pick up four points on that particular play. They move on in front by three, five to two. Chet, the uh, Pioneers and Bombers, uh, for you fans watching in St. Louis, meet tonight for the final game of the series at Keel Auditorium. Plenty of good seats remaining. There's a big match race tonight in St. Louis. Ten laps, relay, blocking race between Charlie O'Connell and Margie Lasso of the Bombers and Ronnie Robinson and Joan Weston of the Pioneers. The same games meet tomorrow at the Amphitheater in Chicago, 3 p.m., the last Sunday afternoon game for the Pioneers. And here is something, a big match race. O'Connell and Robinson, no time limit. Anything goes, infield clear. We've got Bombers on the track. We're going to get a penalty now. Two Bay Bomber skaters are down on the track. Number 34, Dolores Tucker. Number 35, Monica Guest. Jerry Sutter. Many groups, many fans writing into us. How can we get a roller derby game in our area? If you'd like to see a roller derby game in your area, why not write to Roller Derby Bookings, Post Office Box 1827, Oakland, California, 94604. If you have a school or arena or auditorium that seats 2,500 or more people, and you can get a basketball court, and you can get a roller derby track in, bring roller derby into your city right today. The Bay Bomber Girls, 35, Monica Guest, 31, Kathy Pulley, 34, Dolores Tucker, 1971, MVP, 38, Margin Lasso, 37, Carol Ryan. Out of the chair, oh, crazy, I like this kid, Stryker, here comes Andy Jones, skating in the place for the show, right behind him, 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 Two points, Jerry Sutton, double work by Candy Jones. Jerry Sutton, Chet, 
that Candy Jones is going to help this Pioneer team. There's no doubt about it. Her experience on their dam, her speed, and uh, as I say, Joni likes to skate with her. That's going to make a difference. It's going to be uh, really a great addition there. Now within one point, they trail five to four. Uh, Chet, you know, you're going to be the host at that big dinner tomorrow at the uh, Stockyards Inn at the Amphitheater and with uh, Lana Kasanovich. Now, I don't know if you have a big announcement or what tomorrow, but Chet, I frankly don't think you have any fans. I don't think anybody's going to turn out to see you after the game tomorrow. My mother promised she'd be there. Anybody I owe money to should be there. We'll make it a full house. Armina Ortiz, number 36 of the Bay Bombers, takes the belt from Little Rita Williams of the Pioneers. Two on two. Williams, Eric, and the Pioneers, the player jerseys. Bay Bombers, Adjustments in the scoring column before the end of this period. Weston setting it up to go to the field. There you see her with the pivot helmet on. Trying to assist her teammate Williams, but she's also got to maintain a defensive stance. There you see the lockup. Leaning tower of pizza. Irresistible force against the enemy to watch. Weston with the elbow. Back in the pack. Eric Myers. They are out of position on this particular play. And we're going to have a penalty. We are going to have a penalty. Marge Laszlo will sit for one minute. And as a result, the Pioneers total one point. Jerry Seltzer were netted up, 12 minutes gone, 36 remaining in this half. Well, that's it. That's the end of the first period, Chet, with the score. The Pioneers five and the San Francisco Bay Bombers five. All right, back we are in Hammond. Chet Coppock along with Jerry Seltzer. Even up, five and five. Distaff wheelers can take 12 and go to the benches. Male wheelers on the track. Bay Bombers short by one skater as a result of the penalty to March Laszlo. Charlie O'Connell will sit in the booth for 60 seconds. Jerry Seltzer, as this jam gets underway, Jolters coming into the Midwest. That means Patel, Larry Smith, Francine Cashew, Jojo Stafford, Cal Stevens, Rosetta Saunders. Shapes up as a tremendous series. Oh, they're perhaps the strongest team in the year. Look out. Good luck. Bombers block back on Eddie Hessen. You have to say this about the Jolers. They're the strongest they've ever been, and they've always been a good team. And right now, uh, of course, the Jolers coming in next against the Pioneers. And by the way, they open the season for the Bombers in the San Francisco Bay Area on April 22nd. It'll be a great team to see out there. Number 31 is Alvin Mallory. Number 34, Bob Dansell. And the Bay Bombers, despite the fact that they are shorthanded, one skater at this moment, have the only jamming press on this particular play. That means Ronnie Robinson. Uh, number 58, white numerous, red and blue uniform. Oh, look at him. Look at that. Oh, perfect. Take him left. Take him right. Up high with the elbow. Right side. Left side. Back goes around the center strip of the road. Oh, perfect. Fans of heaven call it crazy. Mallory can't do it. Dan Schultz can't do it. This jam is over. Oh, Sherry Seltzer. Talk about giving your team a lift in a hurry. Oh, he's too much. Now, Bob Hyde, we want to mention, is out with a fractured cheekbone. Bob actually would be able to escape, but he's had some plastic surgery. Uh, he'll probably be out about another week. And Ronnie Robinson, Tony Smith doing a great job. Ronnie and uh, uh, Rita Williams were at the Ward store in uh, Gary this morning. Had a great turnout there. And you can meet all the pioneers, by the way. All of them. Monday, Mar or rather Thursday, March 29th at Wards in downtown Chicago. Be sure and get there. It's going to be a great afternoon. As Bummer Rice and pioneer John Hurley move up in this particular play, we have 10 minutes remaining in the second period. We're still even up at 5-5. Five and five. Number 57 for the Midwest Pioneers. Moving into the screen right there is Ziggy Rubble, skating in replacement of Bob Hines. Bald Eagle, out of commission for the time being, as Jerry Seltzer told you, but don't you hide fans worry. Durability, consistency, reliability. Various middle names attached to a guy like the Bald Eagle, Bob Hyman. But to be sure, this Pioneer team isn't quite the same without the services of the Bald Eagle. Back to action. Early up high with the elbow. Got the goatee. Number 33, John Rice. Robinson steps in and down. Down goes Johnny Rice. Up front, big feet. One of the four. My pass by John Early. Oh, Jerry Seltzer. We got ourselves one heck of a scramble already as little John Early, number 59, bypasses the big buffalo. We move in front by one point. Well, I'll tell you, I think Ronnie Robinson, here he comes after Pete Boyd down at this end of the track. They got a few words going here. 
Uh, Ronnie's getting ready for that big match race tonight in St. Louis, and of course tomorrow in Chicago, anything goes against Jarrell O'Connell. Remember, the Pioneers beat the Bombers Monday, March 19th, at Iowa State University. Next Thursday, back here in the Hammond Civic Center, APL. Kids are half price at all Hammond games. Remember, there's another big po poster contest sponsored by Wars here at the Hammond Civic Center. A bike and stereo AM, FM radio, four prizes given away the best posters. We're going to show you some posters for a while in advance and come tonight. And one. For the Pioneers, Coach Nick Scopus, Pioneer Man 50 Scopus, 58 Rabbits, 56 Smith, 57 Rubble, 53 Hess, Bay Bomber Man, number 40 Charlie O'Connell, number 32 Jimmy Paul, 36 Buffalo Boy, 34 Bob Dan So. Got it going at Hammond, Pioneers, Bay Bombers, they've been having themselves so kind of a series, it's almost in the books. Right now, Scopus goes to work, and now the melody out and over. Get it together. Now he goes. Oh, well, I'll tell you something. O'Connell married three children. Call him an introvert. He was an extrovert to be sure on that particular play. Here he goes again. Look at him wind up with those elbows. Oh, I'll tell you. Charlie O'Connell. Oh, the corner. And Scuffles, Jerry Seltzer, may be hurt. Oh, look out. Here comes Ronnie Rock. O'Connell beckoning with the chin. Rolling into the Dixie Doodle, floating like a butterfly and stinging like a bee. And to be sure, Nick Scopus took himself some kind of punishment on that last chair. Uh, Jeff, these two uniforms look very similar in black and white. Uh, the uniforms that are in the 30 series are the Bombers. Right there you see them. Except for Charlie O'Connell wears number 40. The uniforms, of course, in the 50 series are the Pioneers. There's Nick Scopus in the infield. Other big games coming up, the Pioneers and... The Bombers, Friday, March 23rd, Louisville Convention Center. Wednesday, March 28th, Champaign Central High School. Friday, March 30th, at the Robertson Fieldhouse in Peoria, Illinois, and Bradley University. Here we go, great skating period. We're going to bring you fans up to date on the road to the world. We're going to be pushing this jam right now. Dynamite Tony Roman gives it to Gail Sayers, O.J. Simpson, hip fake. Now it goes to Big Hill Hill. Right now, Tony Roman in this moment. Bone jamming credit to the beginning of the play. Back in the pack, number 57, Robo. Get the Justin for the punishment of the speed and the skill that's necessary in the International Women of the League. Here goes Robo, takes up Belton Robinson. Oh, good. And I took that turn to the final against the assist. Robo has one point, has total one point at this moment. Another point, he goes to work on Tony's compare to see Tony Robinson down on the line of track. Tony Robo. Going to work, he bypasses Tony Smith. Now he is hooked up to the front of once again. Five points, Jerry Seltzer. Oh, there Look goes a the pioneer to the bench. Tony Roman, one of the great jamming punch the game has ever produced. Totals five points on that particular play, and now the Bay Bombers have got themselves some breathing room. Up by four, ten to six. If you'd like a free copy of the Roman Derby Rules, put your name, address, and zip code number on a postcard. Include the station and city on which you watch Roller Derby and send it to Roller Derby Rolls, Post Office Box 1828, Oakland, California, 94604. Get your free copy of the Roller Derby Rolls. Help to understand this game better. Shot at the Pioneer bench. That's number 59, of course, John Early. Just a little bit shaken up after that last jam. Want to say hi to the Bango Bunch, Kathleen and Rivers, Cindy Comar, Marianne Kupchak, Mark Joe Hunt, Kendi Hitler, and Nancy Searoff. Hello to all the Bango Bunch. Enjoy the game here in Hammond. Hope you fans all along the Pioneer and the Bay Member Networks can say the same. This is the excitement and the glamour of all of it. Oh, in the back of that pack, watch Charlie O'Connell there. Look at him work on Nick Scope. Charlie O in the great speed. Getting the lumps out early. Having a joint session with Bobby Saber. O'Connell will sit and then work for the Bay Bombers. To be sure. Meanwhile, back in the back, Bay Bombers are going to break going to Gallery 31, Denzel 34. Pioneer sitting up in the lock. Robinson Smith, 56, 58. Trying to maintain. Now the Pioneers will have a threat. And he has some 50 through with the second helmet. He's moving through. Oh, Bobby! Fantastic, Chad. It's good to see the good 
young players coming along. Uh, I think Jim Holmes says we're going to see that again on replay. No, I guess they didn't catch it. Oh. Remember, Saturday, March 31st, the uh, Pioneers and Bombers end their series in Logansport, Indiana, at the Berry Bowl at Logansport High School. The Pioneers meet the Jolders April 1st, Sunday, at St. Joseph High School, St. Joseph, Michigan, April 4th in Kankakee, Illinois, at Abraham Lincoln High School. Saturday, April 7th, at Forest View High School in Arlington Heights. Tuesday, April 10th, the Mid-South Coliseum in Memphis, Tennessee, with the big match race between Joan Weston and Jan Vallow. Also, Saturday, April 14th, at Wisconsin Rapids, Wisconsin. The Bombers, Johnny Rice, first out on this jam. Number 33, John Early gives him the elbow, swings out into action, moving across the Pioneer turn. Bay Bombers up by three. Bombers 10, Pioneer 7, just over three minutes remaining in the second period. Johnny Rice, he'll go one and one with Ronnie Robinson. Back in the pack, Johnny Rice in progress. Now early in a defensive stance, cannot do anything to assist his Pioneer teammates. Robinson just taking his time. Men's captain, but was Pioneers. But high with the elbow on Johnny Rice. There goes early. Rice, little Johnny, takes the punishment. Now Tony Rogan will try to help his team. Pioneers having some fun right now. Bill Hill encased in the headlock by Charlie O'Connell. Nick Scopus, number 50. Moving over to see just what's going on with one of his chickens. By the way, Chad, we're getting a great amount of mail. And by the way, some of it this week wasn't too complimentary. They say they don't like the way you and I do the telecast. They prefer Walt Harris. Uh, of course, the fans of the Bay Area are going to get Walt Harris. But if you'd like to write to Chad about anything about the Pioneer Network, any question you want to answer, he'll answer each letter personally in his own childlike scrawl. Write to Chad Copy, care of NES, 300 North State Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60610. And be sure and tell him I said to write. I want to thank your secretary for buying me that new book of fingerprints. Jerry, some of the mail, to be sure, was not all that complimentary, but we're still running about five to one. I just wonder if we shouldn't cancel these telecasts if the fans don't like them, Jeff. I hope not. What about my rent? Alvin Mallory, Bob Dancel, 31, 34, respectively for the Bay Bombers, who lead by four points, 11-7. Pioneers and arrears minus the services in this game. Oh, 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 oh. He's under guard. He's under guard. A little bit of treatment for the Frenchman Chief Bull, but he will be back in action. Bay Bombers, low jamming threats at this moment in the pack. Buckle the boy, 36 Chief Cook, number 38. Trying to slow it down to a standstill if they can. Look at that, Ronnie Robbins. Unbelievable. Two on one again, and he maintains. He's like having two guys back there. He does it all for you. Jerry Seltzer to be sure. A long series. A lot of rivalries have been built up. Oh, you fans in Chicago, get up. That's it. That is the end of the second skating period with the score. The Bay Bombers 11, the Pioneers 7. Family Day here at the Hammond Civic Center. A couple of generations represented there, just like when Jerry Seltzer and I get together, there's also a couple of generations represented. Jerry, of course, the youth market. That's right, you're awfully old, Chet. You're 71. Look at those signs. Pioneers are great. Posters. Pioneers are grand. Let's give the Pioneers a great big hand. Yay, Pioneers. They're, Yay, they're, Sherry Eric. They're not going to like that on the uh, Bomber Network, Chet. A little while, we're going to show the winning poster here today. Right now, 
as we move into third period action. Sherry Eric, one of the Midwest Pioneers, there you see her, the ice cream kid. The long blonde hair just kind of flapping in the breeze. Number 34 is Dolores Tucker, as I said, 1971 MVP, a seven-year veteran, lots of savvy. Been with the Bombers since 1968. One of the better blockers you will find on the back track, to be sure. Maintaining, here comes Weston, trying to set it up. Little Sherry trying to work on this strategy. And we put it back in the There you saw it. Here comes Weston. Now Sherry to work on Laszlo. Here comes the whip. Right hand over left. In goes Sherry Eric. Did she score? I don't believe so. Now she does. They say she got one point, Jeff. So. They rule one point for the Midwest Pioneers. But the margin has been cut. Chet, uh, if we can, we'd like to show you the winning posters here in a few moments. Uh, here is the winning poster. Go get them, Pioneers. There's a great big, beautiful red uh, Pioneer wagon. I, what do they call those? Uh, Conestogas or something like that, Chet. Edsels? And here is the other one. Our director, Jim Holmes, says that's a cigar. Here's the second prize. If you think you can do as well or better, make a poster, bring out the Hammond next Thursday. Montgomery Wards may give you a great prize. And of course, there's a great contest tomorrow. Guess the score of the game. And you may win some great prizes. Get your free entry blank at any Ward store of the game tomorrow at the amphitheater. Here we go, Chet. All right, four chambers out of this particular play. will bring you up to date here's the representation. This action goes back in the pack. Archie Laszlo, Dolores Tucker with Jordan Weston. Weston gets the right hand in there. And the double is going to sit. Jordan Weston is going to sit. We will have two Bay Bomber points on this particular play as the result of the score and the result of the penalty. You know, it sure is great here in Hammond. Uh, there's going to be kind of a friendly contest going out in the San Francisco Bay Area, I know. When the uh, Bombers open the Keysar Pavilion, we got almost 4,000 here in Hammond. Uh, the Bombers get that same kind of turnout against the Jolders. And by the way, the Pioneers meet the Jolders Sunday, April 15th at the State Fairgrounds Coliseum in Indianapolis, Indiana. That'll be the first time the Jolders will be back there since they skated his home team last season. Uh, a 6 p.m. game there with the blocking match race between Joan Weston and Jan Vallo. That's at State Fairgrounds Coliseum in Indianapolis. The Pioneers meet the Jolders again at Thornton Township High School in Harvey April 16th and Tuesday, April 17th, Elk Grove High School, Wednesday, April 18th, at the Fairgrounds Coliseum in Springfield, Illinois. And I got a story about Springfield for you in a while, Jeff. Is that the one that was banned in Peoria? Rita Williams, number 50 for the Midwest Pioneers. Out of the jam and down she goes. The Bombers low threat right now is Carol Peters Meyer as action back in the back continues. When your fans are out watching World of Derby, jamming, it's the skill position, it's the speed, it's the glamour. It's like the halfback in pro football. Watch it back in the pack. That's the land of the Giants. That's the pit. That's where the centers, the 6 8 forwards, going to work on each other. Right now, there's a girl who really knows how to go to work. In the personage of number 58, Darlene Forbes. Maintaining with the assistant for teammate Rita Williams. Look at little Rita, only four of them from the high field. Comes twice. And a girl who only stands about four feet ten. Little Carol Peanuts Tomorrow. Back slowing down, Weston back on the track, both squads five on five, both strike two, one and two. Jammers, pivot skater, and blockers. Cutting down the time in this jam. We'll wait for the determination. We will have two Bay Bomber points. So, Jerry Seltzer, Bay Bombers increase their lead as once again the Pioneers have just a little bit of trouble getting the game in there. Oh, down there, Margie Lazar. Come on, Johnny Weston. Sorry, that was Sherry Eric. It wasn't Johnny Weston. Real, real wild. John O'Connell cheering his team on down there. Uh, Jerry, you know, uh, as we watch down there and we pick up on this action, John Weston, suffering from eccentric headache number 16. Last night, uh, Johnny and Nick Scopus picked up a couple of hockey tickets from here's truly and went into Chicago Stadium to see the Blackhawks and the Rangers. And they told me they were absolutely besieged to the point of having to have a police escort to and from the arena because there were so many fans who wanted autographs and pictures and what have you. I understand. Just a tribute to this great sport. That's fantastic. I understand they had to stop the game because the Blackhawks came up from the stands and asked Joe for an autograph. As in Charlie Finley, wish he could have that with the Oakland Seals. Sue 
Casey Nybauer, number 56 for the Pioneers, number 57 is Kenny Jones. I'll tell you something, the stunt you did, boy, can she move. Talk about it, Joe. Back in the pack, Tucker. Look at Carol Meyer. That should be a penalty for the referees. Don't pick up on I believe. Meanwhile, to the chair, Jones, Monica Guest, right behind her, and made by her teammate Armita Ortiz. A one on two situation. Pioneers short handed, although they are not short handed insofar as actual team strength is concerned. Up front, there you see Joni Weston holding off a challenge. Look at the Golden Girl. Look at her, minimum of effort, exercising about 15% strength. She puts down a bait bomber, skater. Dolores Tucker, Miss Morgan, and Susie Nybauer. Weston misses on the bait. Trying to come back with the elbow. We are out of time on this jam, and the hands go out of the safe position. There will be no points on this particular play. I'll tell you something, Chet. You can't say too much there for Dolores Tucker. Boy, when she gives away in size, she is fantastic. There is a great new newspaper. If you'd like to get a free copy, Right to Roller Derby Illustrated. General Post Office Box 17, New York, New York, 10001. And Chet, every week that paper gets better. Articles by Chet Kopik, but as soon as we can, you know, get some very high-priced uh, writers, we'll get rid of that. Uh, Walt Harris has a column every week. Great stories and pictures of your favorites and uh, really unbelievable. Be sure and get your copy. This paper comes out every two weeks. Contrary to popular opinion, my column is not submitted in Bohemia. Uh, be sure to stay tuned right after the end of this half. We're going to talk to Ronnie Robinson and Charlie O'Connell. Remember, you're going to see the second half later, right here on this same station. We got one here. Look at Dolly Ford. Come on. Woo! Force. Again. Return. And I fly to score. Basketball. Five goal. You fans in Chicago. Chad is 13 to 11 bombers. Uh, Margie Lasso looks hurt down there. But uh, she is getting back on her feet. I think she will be all right. And the Pioneers here starting that familiar chant, go, go, go. If you live anywhere in the area, come out to Hammond next Thursday. Fantastic turnout. Great kids are half price now in Hammond, and that's made a great difference. And uh, a lot of groups here tonight, Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, we're getting more and more of those everywhere. And if, if you live in the Chicago area and you'd like to have a group Come to the game. Call on Monday. This number right here, 329-1328. 329-1328 in St. Louis, Chestnut 10884. That's Chestnut 10884. And you can also get group rates in the San Francisco Bay Area at the Coliseum box office. Jerry, you know, as you mentioned, Hammond, Indiana, here at the Civic Center, the great thing about these games here, it's a small arena, great sight lines. The fans are also friendly. There's so many great people here. It's really a great way to enjoy yourself and get out and meet some terrific people. Look at Laszlo. Oh, going to get a penalty. She is arguing with the referee, but uh, she was going to get a penalty. Joan Weston, the 17 time All Star, being attended to. Large Laszlo flaring. Fire coming out of those brown eyes. Bay Bombers up by two right now. 2.30 to play in the third period. Don't forget, four coming up with the interview session. Jerry Seltzer, what's going to happen during that interview session this time around? Well, I don't know. Uh, of course, Charlie and uh, Ronnie meet in that big match race tomorrow at the amphitheater. They're also part of the match race tonight in St. Louis. And I'm sure they're going to have a few interesting words. Uh, we mentioned before, Friday, April 20th, Cincinnati Gardens, the Pioneers and the Jolters. Also, May 8th in Green Bay at that beautiful Coliseum there, the home of some kind of football team. Yes, Chuck? <laughs> Back is reformed, and Dolores Tucker with the pivot helmet on. Moves out for the Bay Bombers, followed by Sherry Ehrlich with the long blonde hair, the strawberry ice cream kid, and the request for the 
number 31, Kathy Pulliam, trying to assist Dolores Tucker. Sherry Eric being written out of the play as they jockey for position here on the turf in Hammond. Referees, a tough assignment so far in this first half. It's been a wild and woolly kind of game. Don't forget, a big second half coming up. You fans, keep tuned to Burnaby. The excitement, the glamour, and this is the sport of the seven. This is what they're talking about everywhere. Burnaby needs excitement. Look at West to the pie with the elbow. Again. Tony wants to go forward and march last ball. There you see it. Tim, back. Stand like a clock. Pounding out the rhythm. Keeping up with the beats. Oh, Dolores Tucker on with the railing. Trying to maintain her balance. West to the pin. Right. Captain of the Midwest Pioneers. Just over 30 seconds to play in the third period. Joan Weston has got that little grin in her face. A shy little grin from the girl who used to be from up in the farm country of Wisconsin. Now she calls the Bay Area her home, likes to go out and surf in Hawaii. That's Joan Weston, a legend on the bank truck. Very soft, so I can hardly wait to see Joan Weston match up with Rosetta Saunders. Oh, Jan Valentine, she's fantastic. We got one matchup right here, though, right now. Time's running out in this period. That is it. Jeff, that is the end of the third skating period with the score. The San Francisco Bay Bombers, 13, and the Pioneers, 11. One-fourth of the first half remaining to be played. Number 36, Buffalo Boyd and Ronnie Robinson. Number 58 for the Pioneers going at it early as the pack forms and the jamming process begins. Johnny Rice, first stop for the Bay Bombers. Number 53 is at Hessen right behind him. Trying to maneuver, trying to gain the edge. That's what it's all about. To be sure, I don't think Johnny has the edge right now. The Midwest Pioneers, Eddie Hess, the young kid has been really putting it together in recent weeks. This series has been something of an evolution for this kid. You're going to be hearing an awful lot about Ed Hess in the weeks to come. I want to bring you up to date one more time. Bob Hine is not in this game. But don't worry, he's going to be back soon. We have a kid named Ziggy Robo wearing jersey number 57 skating in this event. He has proven himself to be more than adequate. But for the board, 240 pounds. Back in a defensive stance, here come the Bay Bombers on the Pioneer Pet, the Pullaway. Pullaway on it for Sid Hammond. Tony Smith picking up the Pioneer charge. Scopus on the whip, the teammate has it. What a Tony Smith! Jerry Seltzer, there we saw a couple of kids. Tony Smith set it up with the puck. Ed Hessen scores the points and wisely calls off the jam. We pick up two points. And after that jam, Ronnie Robinson thought that Charlie O'Connell gave a little extra hit. There's a nice, hello, Charlie. Say hello to your fans. Yeah, your hair is there. Look out! Oh, did he hit Ronnie Robinson? A penalty on O'Connell. Oh. San Francisco Bay Bombers shed open their season April 22nd in San Francisco. These are pavilion against the Jovers. Other games include April 25th at the Oakland Auditorium. That is the Oakland Auditorium. April 26th at Richmond. April 27th at the Cow Palace in San Francisco. May 2nd in Stockton. May 3rd in Sacramento. Also a couple of Olympic games, the Jolers and the Bombers. Saturday, May 12th at the Seattle Center Arena. And Sunday, May 13th at the Memorial Coliseum in Portland, Oregon. And there you have it, the schedule for the next year and a half. Ronnie Robinson in the infield being attended to by the track side position. Charlie O'Connell in the booth. He'll sit for a minute. Bay Bombers shorthanded one skater. They'll go five on four. Pioneers with a chance, if they can put it together, to perhaps go out and take the lead. We're even up 13-13. Less than 10 minutes remaining in the first half. An interview session coming up, so keep tuned to Roller Derby. Now Dan Sell all by himself. Last time we had this situation, same thing happened. Pioneers up by one man. They have the edge, but they can't get the jammers out. Here comes Tony Roman. He'll go one-on-one -on -one with Tony Smith. Tony against Tony, and the little guy wins it. Bob Densell moves up through it and scores. Now assisted by his teammate Roman, he is up again. Tremendous second effort, as you saw. Scopus takes a belt from Tony Roman. The little guy, Tony Roman, who seems to exude a minimum of energy. Goes to work to help his teammates. Now Scopus on Densell. Here we go again. Pioneers. Evan and 
ourselves some problems up for early. Don't worry, second half is coming up. Thomas got a jam time and will get back. Touch in Alabama. Bay Bombers go up by three off a three-point jam. So the Pioneers trail 16 to 13. Well, the Pioneers are losing 16 to 13. It's good to see a game between two, inter, two of the teams within the International World League. It's a great, great brand of skating, and of course, the series ends soon. You should be sure to see a game in your area. Of course. Get your fans about that Roman Derby Illustrated. Tremendous rating. Columns by Walt Harris. Lots of features and all the excitement of roller derby. You'll read about people like John Early, Sherry Eric. A lot of fans have written in and said, interview these skaters. Do more with them. We plan on doing it. Roller Derby Illustrated, that's one avenue to find out about each and every one of your favorites. Jerry Seltzer, right now, we've got as good a roller derby game as you could ever hope to see. Well, that's fantastic. Coach keeps going full speed, and that's what you want to see. Had a lot of beef back in that package. You got a couple of guys who are on the tiny side. Little Tony Roman, 5'3, 125 pounds. Trained by the old New York Chief Vendor, Buddy Atkinson Sigro. Flies to the air with the greatest of ease. That is James Paul. That's what they said about him on the last cover of Roller Derby Illustrated. Young Bay Bomber skater with a mod haircut. Beckoning to his teammates. The strategy via the visual signals going on in the Civic Center in Hammond. I'm Chet Coppock along with Jerry Seltzer. You fans out west of the Bay Bomber Network hope you're enjoying this telecast. Your team's opening up soon. Get out there and have some fun. Look at O'Connell miss. Ronnie Robinson does it again. O'Connell can't put it together. Catching nothing but air. Now he goes to work on Scopus. James Paul picks up a point. The try to fight Mitch Robinson. He cannot do it. And the officials make their signal. Two Bay Bomber points to move out to a five-point lead. Bay Bombers 18, Pioneers 13. Be sure and stay tuned in the end of this half. We're going to talk to Charlie O'Connell, Ronnie Robinson. And at the end of the second half of this game, which you're going to see on the station, we're going to talk to Margie Laszlo and Joan Weston. Chet, I was talking before about Springfield, Illinois. You know, a long time ago, when Roller Derby started here on this uh, Roller Derby network, the San Francisco Bay Area, some 16 years ago on uh, KTVU, where we're still seen, we had a great sponsor out there, as we do in Chicago, and Burt Wyman, a fellow named Larry Robinson. And now Larry Robinson is in Springfield, Illinois, with his uh, Ford dealership down there, and he's bringing this first half of Roller Derby. We want to welcome all you people in Springfield. You now see the first half on Sat uh, Thursday night, the second half on S Saturday. And uh, if you live anywhere near Larry, drop in and say hello. Yeah, Jerry, you mentioned an old friend of ours there, Kurt Weimer, back in Chicago. The Pioneers will and everything five hill down in the 51 out of this chair. Red blue. That's the backdrop of the white windows. Anyone else? What are these two? Oh, boy. Right they do tomorrow the Avalanche, Jeff. Norman and Fraser. That's the classic matchup. That's Chamberlain against Abdul Jabbar. That's Sammy Huff against Jim Brown. That's what this sport is all about. Matchups like O'Connell against Ronnie Robinson. You fans in the amphitheater. That's what you see at 3 o'clock Sunday afternoon, which just happens to be tomorrow. Now Mallory and Tony Smith. Here comes Jimmy Cook. Ryan to move up and help his teammate. They're going to work on Tony Smith. Smith doing yeoman work here in the first half of play. I'll tell you something. That kid's going to be an asset for years on this club. Action at all ends of the track right now. Alvin Mallory, of course, with the jamming coming out. Number 31 trying to get the assist from his teammate Jim Cook. We'll just have to wait and see officially what has happened. I believe there will be no points. That is correct. For once in my life, I pick a winner. We go scoreless on that jam. 4.49 remaining. First half of play in the Civic Center. Pioneers short by five. Bay Bombers 18. Midwest Club 13. Chet, a lot of people would like to know about advanced games in their areas. If you uh, would like to know, why not put your name on a postcard or letter, include the station and zip code number, and send it to Roller Derby mailing list. The post office box 1828, Oakland, California, 94604. And our mail boy, Bud Wiener, will get it all together and send it right out to you post haste. 
know, Jerry, some fans have written into me and said, uh, I sent in for my mailing list, or I sent in for my Roller Derby Illustrated, and I haven't gotten it yet. Sometimes, fans, these things do take time. There may be a problem. My secretary may have been ill or something. Like that. Who knows? Don't worry. It'll get there in due time. And in due time, we expect Ronnie Robinson, man's captain of West Pioneers, to oh. begin putting it together offensively for his team. Look who he's going to meet at the rear of that pack. Oh, baby. Get ready. I hope the reinforcements are set because they may hear this collision all the way down at Indianapolis site of the 500. Charlie O'Connor and Ronnie Robinson, they've gone against each other so many times, but each time it's a new experience. Let's set it up. Let's let the story tell the whole thing. Robinson, the glue that holds everything together, and look at that. Just one more for good luck. It's going to cost Ronnie Robinson a minute, Jerry Seltzer, but I don't think he minds. Well, Ronnie Robinson got a penalty for that, but I'm sure he doesn't care. Charlie O'Connell seems to pull the muscle in his leg. This has not been an easy half for Charlie O. Ronnie Robinson will sit. And so, with the Pioneers short by four points, they're going to have to go at the Bay Bombers, five on four, minus one skater. Bay Bomber men, 40 O'Connell, 38 foot, 36 foot low board. Number 34, Bob Mansell, 31 is Alvin Mallory. You know, I like that kid, Alvin Mallory. He's a college French American from his merit college. Five, everything nice for you. Put the air, put the up here. I think John Early may be overmatched here, Chet. John Early. Gonna go out and maybe get himself an education. Charlie O'Connell's gonna sit, I believe. Yes, O'Connell is being waved off the track and he won't move. O'Connell's screaming at the men of the strike. He's been waved off, he must sit. Jerry Seltzer, he can be thrown out of the game for a move like this. Look at Robinson. Here comes Ronnie Robinson out of the back. Giving up. Here he comes again. Robinson. Oh, no! Look at these fans. Four thousand fans on their feet here at the Hamlet Civic Center. Incredible display. And look at Tony Roman. Roman advice to tackle Pioneer Bay. Now Ed Hessen moves in. Oh boy, they're going to blow this off, I'm sure, tomorrow at the amphitheater. You fans in the area get out there. Tomorrow, big match race, Charlie O'Connell and Ron Robinson. And of course, tonight, St. Louis and Neil Anatoly. They're still going, Chet. we got about 25 seconds to go in the half. Everybody is fighting on both teams. I don't know if they're going to get another jam together. I guess this is what the Third World War is going to look like. Well, Jerry Seltzer, this half is coming to a close. The Bay Bombers lead by four points, 16 to 14. They're going to have an innumerable amount of penalties, to be sure, but they will carry over into the second half. I tell you, the second half shapes up really big. Tony Roman and Johnny Rice attacked the Pioneer bench. You went after Ronnie Robinson. Soon Ed Hessen was involved. Then Nick Scopus, then Buffalo Boyd. Oh, I tell you. Well, that's it, Chet. That is the end of the first half. And remember, I'll be back in just a moment with Charlie O'Connell, Ronnie Robinson. There's your score. The Bombers 18, the Pioneers 14. Jerry Seltzer here at trackside uh, at the end of the first half. Great, great wild skating first half. 
Charlie, uh, your team got a little rough there at the end. Of course, you have the lead. Well, naturally, uh, anytime we start out playing the right kind of a game like we're normally doing and it starts getting a little rough, the new method of the Bombers team now is skate the way the opponents skate. And that's the way it's going to be. So expecting to see the Bombers all across the United States, they're just going to see a, a rougher game than it's normally and used to be in the past. Well, you're going to keep that when you go back to Bay Area on Absolutely. April 22nd? Absolutely. Absolutely. Bay Area fans are going to see a new, tap, new type of game now that we're going to do that we I've never believed in doing. But it has to be because, uh, I mean, I'm tired of myself getting hurt, most of my teammates getting hurt, so now we're going to start dishing a little bit of it out. Uh, what do you think about that, Ronnie? Do uh, you believe in this kind of game? Jerry, uh, as far as Mr. O'Connell is concerned, it, it really surprises me that a man of, of his talent would have to resort to such tactics. And as far as him being rough, as rough as he wants to get, the Pioneers can get just as rough. Well, they were really taking it to you that half, and it looked like the Pioneers were laying back a little. Is that your strategy for the well, game? Well, we've been known to more or less hold back and to coast through the first half and really come on the second half. So we'll, we'll you know, like I said, we'll wait and see what happens in the second half. All right, I'm going to ask you a question first, and I'm going to ask it to Charlie. you got a match race for the fans watching in Chicago tomorrow at the amphitheater. No time limit, anything goes, infield cleared. Can you handle a man this size, and how are you going to handle this race? Well, as far as how I'm going to handle it, I really don't know yet. Uh, skating against Charlie has always been a challenge to me. All I can say is I'll give it my utmost. Are we going to get a sample in the second half? We might. Charlie, how are you going to skate against Ronnie tomorrow at the amphitheater? Well, she's been known to hold a lot bigger people on a track, and there's no, no problem there. He's going to get the same kind of a contest that he's always gotten when I've raced him, which is an, uh, a complete... You know, ridiculous type of uh, game. It's just anything goes. Now, I didn't want to skate this type of game, and I didn't want this match race. But he provoked it, and that's the way it's going to be. I have not been accepting any match races across the country, but this one I'm going to take on because it's going to be everything goes. Nobody in the infield, I understand, but who knows. But that's the way I like it anyway. I want everyone to see what's going to happen. Well, that's tomorrow, of course, at the amphitheater for you fans of Chicago. Also, after the game, big dinner at the Stockyards Inn. Uh, they, only, they always have pioneers. Yeah, Don't that's you a lot of baloney. This, I'm crashing that thing. Oh, you're I'm not going to go there with Chet Kopik and uh, No, Bozo the Clown isn't allowed in there. He's, I'm just going to go in there tonight and uh, just do a normal thing, go eat my dinner, may have a couple of comments to some of the jerky people. Because you mean tomorrow? Tomorrow, yeah. right. Isn't that when the steak yeah. point? Yeah, well, let's see how good they hand out steaks to the bomber team. Well, there you hear it right from the uh, coach's mouth. Uh, Ronnie, lots of luck tomorrow in the race. Thank you, Jerry. You too, Charlie. I, I know you're going to give the fans a great treat out there. Remember, you're going to see the second half later on the same station, the Bombers and Pioneers, two of the greatest teams in the league, and any time they get together, boy, you really have action. This is Jerry Seltzer from the Hammond Civic Center in Hammond, Indiana.